Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian with Legacy Escape Box, and today we are talking about the importance of presentation. Presentation is really important in any escape room. Whenever you're designing an escape room for home or for school or for work, then the presentation of the room should be really important to you as you're designing the game. You're the moderator, and so you have to set up the game, you have to know the game frontwards and backwards, but it is also important to put some effort into how you present the room so that all of the participants have as much fun as possible. My goal for when I design escape rooms for fun, for home, for school, for work, is to have people finish the escape room. So I want them to have a lot of fun doing it. As a moderator, sometimes I'm involved in the room itself so that if they have a question, I can point them in the right direction, but I really want to be part of the room. Escape rooms are a form of escapism, so that means you get to go away for an hour and you get to be a spy, or you get to uncover the clues in Sherlock Holmes' office, or you get to go on a heist or a mission or something else. So it's really important as a moderator not to take away from the fun of the room. So that means sometimes you have to be part of the room. You can be an assistant spy, you can be part of the group that goes in, you can be one of any kind of character who goes in that fits the theme of the room so that you can help participants. So for a room like a spy room, you can simply go in, put on your glasses. Now, I don't normally wear glasses, so people know if I have these on, but it's part of a costume, right? Gosh, I gotta get these things off, wow. So participants know that when I have these glasses on, I'm part of the room, so I can be helpful. I can help spies in that spy room. Because there's so many different kinds of escape rooms you can make, in a Sherlock Holmes room, you might look like this. So this is a simple shirt and a simple jacket. I love this jacket. I got this jacket in St. Andrews, so it would actually go really well with the Sherlock Holmes theme. So now let's say you wanted to host an escape room around World War II. Well, you might want to wear something like this. So this is a World War II jacket, believe it or not. I love this jacket. This is the real deal. I'm going to give you a closer look in a second. This was my grandfather's jacket from World War II. So this is pretty amazing. It's epic. This jacket's incredible. So. If you're doing one for that era, then this would be perfect. So whatever you're gonna do, figure out how you wanna host it, figure out what kind of theme you want, and just slide into that a little bit if you're gonna be part of the escape room. Okay, so back to normal clothes. Okay, so presentation is super important, and I wanna show you guys a few other ways that you can up your presentation a little bit, up your game in your escape room. All right guys, so the next thing you can do to up your presentation, um, for example, is to think of all the little details in the room and then make those better. So if we're gonna do a Sherlock Holmes room, Sherlock Holmes was active around 1897 and the years before that and the years after that. So I actually have a reproduction of Stanford's map of central London, 1897, this big map. I've used this map in other videos also. It's an amazing map. It would fit perfect in the room, so try to get a map that you can use. This book, I would actually use this book in an escape room. This book is actually 1897 as well. So this book is over 100 years old, obviously. So how amazing is that? All of the little details that you can put into a room makes the room better. And this would fit great into an escape room. Next, I always like to have an introduction letter in an escape room. Not always, but a lot of the time. I think it helps quite a bit. It can tell people their mission, it can give clues. This one, um, we're actually gonna learn how to use a wax stamp so that you can make this really authentic. One way to open up an escape room is to give a clue or give a message. You just print out on a white piece of printer paper, it's not gonna be that authentic. But if you handwrite something, put it in an old looking envelope, and then put a wax stamp on it, it can go a long way. Okay, here we're gonna put some effort into creating a secret message and then we're gonna seal that in this amazing envelope with a wax stamp. So as always, be careful when using a flame. This is a lit candle. So let's go ahead and create our message. All right, so can you guys find the clue here? This one, for example, is a fun one. See how I lined up the first letters? L-I-F-E, 
Also the first four letters, L for look carefully, I for I have hidden, first letter of each new sentence, F for find, E for every. Life, life, and I use the word life again here. If you give this message along with this, Turn it to life and it'll open. The next thing we'll do is go ahead and fold up our letter to fit in this envelope. Fold it once here and another time here. It will now fit in our envelope. So when we close it, it would be super cool with that Black stamp, let's go ahead and use that. What you're gonna to wanna to do is just slightly start burning the end of your stamp. It does not take much. Then you wanna go ahead and drip that directly on where you're gonna stamp it. So this is made specifically for wax stamping. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to drip this it's gonna make a pretty large circle, but I've gotta to continue to make these little drops to get a good circle on here. So this takes a minute. This wax is made specifically for stamps to close envelopes. You want to cover the whole area. Okay, that's probably enough, so I'm going to put it out. Make sure all of that wax is on the envelope. Oh, H for Holmes. Check that out. Press firmly. Hold it for maybe five, 10 seconds. Release. And you now have a letter from Sherlock Holmes that you can use in your escape room. This is going to be really authentic and super cool for the participants. So another thing you can do in an escape room, of course, is to use props. So if I'm in a spy room, you can always hand somebody information, but it's even cooler if in a spy room is if you get to use a manila folder and pull out the information that you need, right? So using something like this, something super easy to do, makes it more authentic, makes it a lot more fun. Uh, if you wanna take it one step further, you can use a prop like this briefcase. So instead of just the information, instead of just the folder, you make them unlock it, then open it, and then pull it out. This briefcase is super cool because it actually has locks on both sides. You can set locks, puzzles all around this so that they have something to open to retrieve the information that they need. If I'm gonna do a Cold War Russian escape room, for example, I actually also got a hold of these authentic pens and badges from the Cold War period. Now, if you can get a hold of something like this, this is really amazing. Some of these pens are quite outstanding. You can see the age on some of these. So if you're able to get a pen like this, then you can definitely use it in an escape room to up the authenticity level. Now, how can you use these? If you can use these in an escape room, that would be really amazing. One way you can do this is just simply to hide these tokens around the room. When people find these tokens, not only does it up the authenticity of the escape room, but they can also use these tokens, for example, to bribe a fellow spy, they could even ask an additional question of you, the moderator. So by doing something in the room, and you know that they will have questions, this is a good way to reward them for finding something in the escape room. Another thing I like to do in escape room is to find something. So the final objective could be find diamonds, for example. Grabbing a small little black bag like this and putting some diamonds in it. I'm not gonna tell you if these are fake or real. Maybe they're real, maybe they're fake and maybe they're real. But the point is, if you can get things like this, it will really help out your escape room. 
Friendly notes everyone, always use adult supervision and caution when using fire or an open flame. Okay, now that's out of the way, we're going to light a fire. So, let's light a candle. Another candle. All right. So another cool thing you can do in an escape room is to have a map. So you can have this in a spy room, a Sherlock room, a pirate room, any kind of adventure or heist room. Maps are super fun, but one way to up it a little bit, bring up that level, is to burn the edges. So a square doesn't look so old, right? A nice clean square. So what we can do is a couple of things. First, we can cut the edges. Uh, then we can also burn the edges. So I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so if we want to make that map, if you want to make it look older and a little bit cooler, one thing you can do... By the way, this is not a plain white piece of paper. This is a textured linen cotton piece of paper that is a little bit yellowed, so it's going to look a little bit better for a map. So the first thing I'm going to do is not to have it at that normal 8.5 by 11 size. I'm going to cut it, and you can do this any shape you want. I like just a little bit of a round edge here. So once you know where your map is going to be, then you can go ahead and cut it. This does not have to be a perfect shape because remember, whenever you cut it, it looks a little more rustic. Just going to finish these hard corners. I don't want any corners too hard here. And we should be good to go now. One thing to remember when burning edges is that fire burns fast. Always be careful when using fire. Always just like to have a candle and then put some of the paper over that. I can already feel the paper getting hotter. As soon as it starts to burn, you're gonna have to blow it out. I'm gonna go ahead and light one edge. I can see it's smoking a little bit. You can see there's just a little bit of brown on the edge, which is really cool. Catch it on fire and immediately blow it out. So when it, when it starts to smoke, then we turn it because fire always burns up, right? And it's gonna start burning these edges a little bit more. Do not attempt this if you're not an adult and if it's not legal for you to do this. We're just gonna continue burning these edges a little bit. If you want to cut off a little bit more, you always can. We're just going to continue to burn these edges and blow them out very quickly as soon as they catch on fire because they will burn just a little bit even after they catch on fire. Just get it barely going and then blow it out immediately. You'll have burned edges. You have to be really patient with this. Just a little bit at a time is what you want. Okay, so now we've gone all the way around. Uh, it didn't burn down the house. And so now you can see how our map has these burned edges all the way around. It looks super cool. It looks more authentic. It looks a lot more fun in an escape room. You can hide this somewhere, you can put it in a book, but this final product looks really amazing. Okay everyone, thanks for watching. This was the importance of presentation in an escape room. So whenever you're designing your own escape rooms for home or school or work, check us out at LegacyEscapeBox.com. We have some amazing escape rooms that are free for you to download and use. Make sure to check out our other videos. It's really important to hit the like button and it's really important to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our videos. Make sure to share the video with someone else you know might be designing their own escape room for home or for school or for work. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.